Alabama in Birmingham. My name is Lee Naves and it's my privilege this evening to serve as moderator for the program. We have two very special guests. One is Dr. Yosef Ben Yakanen, who is an African anthropologist, an educator, an author, and a scholar. He's on my right and on my left is Dr. George Simmons. Dr. Simmons is also a professor. He was born in the St. Croix Virgin Islands, USA. And we will discuss a number of topics this evening. These gentlemen are here to talk about African origins. As you know, in America, Black History Month is celebrated every February. Without further ado, let's get right into it because I know they have some interesting viewpoints that will stimulate your thinking even if you disagree with them or agree. I'm gonna call you Dr. Ben, if that's okay, because I don't see that's what people usually call you. Yes. One of the more controversial positions that you take is that black Africans landed in America 2,000 years before Columbus. Uh, I would uh, not specify the, the day, but probably exceeding 2,000 years. The fact is that Columbus never came to the United States of America or North and South America. He came as close as San Salvador. Uh, there's a rumor that says that Columbus came to, United, to, to America he did not come to America, he came to an island of America. Vespucci came to America, not Columbus. He came to the Caribbeans. But it is commonly stated, just as much as they state, that Columbus discovered America while the Indians sat down watching him doing it. Now, but uh, all the, the, the knowledge of Africans in the Americas uh, quite knowledgeable to scholars. The fact that it's suppressed doesn't have uh, any validity at all. Let me bounce a couple of things off of you. One thing, this article that I'm going to be referring to, to our home audience and to our studio audience, this article came out in the September 1981 issue of Science Digest, and it's entitled Black Kings in Ancient America. You and some other black scholars believe that these people, African people, came to this continent before Columbus. We don't believe, we know. How do you know? What the, evidence? The evidence is there. For example, when you go to uh, Central America, the Yucatan Peninsula, and uh, at Ecuador and places like that, they have catches of uh, Carthaginian money found 200 feet down in the ground, meaning that there were preluvial disruptions and those money was buried. So it, mean, it indicate a period of time at least from that when you look at the strategy, you could tell the period of time in which they've been here. And when you're talking about Carthage, you're talking about at least 212 BC when Carthage was finally destroyed by the, by the, by the Romans. Uh, again, the Queen, uh, Queen Makeda, uh, which you call the Queen of Sheba, there are maps which Rome, the church in Rome, the so-called Holy Father, has suppressed these maps from the time of Justinian, showing South America and what is today called Central America. The, the maps there and, and Victoria, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, Makeda goes back to at least 892 B.C. Before Christ. Before the Let me point out another thing, just from the same article. I don't know if we can see this on television. But here is a picture. Tell me what this is, and why do you see this as proof of the presence of Africans in America before? That is the Columbus. head of an Olmec, uh, 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 Olmec. And the Olmecs were said to be the first of the indigenous Americans. And uh, if you look, if an Olmec walked in here, then you would believe that he had come from the middle of Africa. And there is no doubt about it that all of the writers prior to racism admitted that the Olmecs were in fact Africans who had come across here. There is no doubt when uh, Pignafetto and others, the point is that Van Settema is writing and others, but Leo Weiner in 1938 at Harvard University wrote a two volume book for which he was fired about the Africans, uh, Olmecs being Africans. And well, let me bounce this off of you, okay? You take the same statue, mm -hmm. you say, well, you say that they're obviously black African. features, yes. thick lips, broad nose, mm -hmm. 
the stereotype. But, okay, other, the stereotype. Other anthropologists say, I think Michael Cole was one of them. He says that this is not a black man. He said the people who made these statues, which I understand are eight feet high, the people who made these statues didn't have sharp enough tools to give them white features. So they're not really black statues. They're white people carved with crude tools. What's your response to that? It's strange that the tools were not sharp enough to make narrow noses, but it was sharp enough to put eyelids. So it would seem to me that an eyelid is harder to make than a tin nose. But uh, Michael Cole is no less a racist than the head of the Ku Klux Klan. I mean, what's the difference between Michael Cole, Reagan, and the Ku Klux Klan? It is, it have the same philosophy. What is the difference between the fellows writing the Bible and write about the Queen of Sheba asking, I mean, saying to Solomon, uh, look, uh, look not, ye daughters of Cade, look not upon me because I'm black. My parents sent me in the vineyard and that's all this nonsense. She's black because nature made her black. Her mother and father were black, that's why she's black. Had nothing to do but going in any vineyard, even though it's in the Bible. Okay, you talked about religion. We're gonna to get to that in a while. Let me turn to Dr. Simmons. You also agreed with this position that Africans run in this I have no problem, no doubt. Why? As a matter of fact, speaking about, uh, like Dr. Ben mentioned, uh, and you spoke about Michael Nico, I owned a book several years ago and still have it in my possession by Michael D. Coe himself, who is considered one of America's leading archaeologists and anthropologists from Yale, one of America's most prestigious schools. In his own work, he referred to them as Negroid. And he went farther to state the title of the book is America's first civilization, what he calls civilization. And to turn around and to tell these youngsters and other people in America particular that the black men was the first to build any type of civilization in the Americas will be disturbing to Americans. And so... Let me ask you this. Yes. E even if you're right, let's say you're right, what difference does it make? It makes a lot of difference. What kind of difference? It takes the inferiority complex out of the black man who felt that his only beginning and relationship here in this part of the world is that of slavery. Then it puts him in the driver's seat because, again, they don't tell you that they're man-made hills within the United States. They call them mounds. And they range from in the Midwest all the way down the eastern sea coast of the United States. And they have found artifacts in them that are similar to things found in West Africa and in Egypt, which is Northeast Africa, that predates the arrival of the so-called indigenous Indians to these lands. Another thing is some years ago, one of the major television networks back in New York, I don't remember exactly which one, ABC or which, had did a documentary and they said that these Almecs are the ones who brought right into the Americas about 3000 BC to tell blacks that they ought to be glad to enter into these schools of higher learning today in order to read and write because their ancestors back in Africa couldn't read and write. You, you see how what it will do to tell them that they brought right into the Americas. Antonio Pegavetta that Dr. Ben mentioned, who sailed with Magellan when Magellan came to the so-called New World in 1519, when they landed at the land of Virgin, which we now call Brazil, they were m met by people in canoes that carried as many as 40 people. And Antonio Pegavetta recorded that these people were jet black. It seemed that they came out of uh, the infernal marshes. That meant that they were burnt. He said, naked and black as they are in 1519, 27 years after Columbus's arrival to the so-called New World. Another thing they don't tell you, again, you heard my associate. Well, why haven't we heard these things before? Why don't we read them in the New York Times, Birmingham News? Uh, if I stole another man's country, and I brought your ancestors here to work for me, could I tell you how great your ancestors were and still expect to keep you in slavery? Well, well let, me, let me give you a better, uh, not better necessarily, but an added situation of that. Uh, most black people in Birmingham, Alabama, like in Harlem, New York, are Christians, and they go to a, in a black community, a black minister, a black congregation, but with a white Jesus. Because they didn't know that, the, that Jesus, up until Pope, Mark, Pope Julius II, 
had the first black Jesus painted. He had Michelangelo to do it. But up until that time, the world worshipped the black Madonna and child. Okay, the present open. Pope is going back to Poland All right. to worship at the statue of the black Madonna and child. That's in the New York Times. But what the Times says the next day, don't worry about the black Madonna and the child. She was originally white, but there was a storm in the 16th century passed by and, and, and turned it black. But the same storm must have gone to Spain, and then it went to Ethiopia, and it went to the Soviet Union, and turned all the black Madonnas back. It was a hell of a storm. <laughs> well, okay, let me just, let's get together here. I mean, we're jumping around, and I think we're going to have a beautiful, interesting hour. Okay, right. because of this subject, I was going to get to this later, but since you opened it, let's deal with it. Okay, well, you're in the Bible Belt, gentlemen. I, I heard so. You heard so. And I must tell our audience, we had dinner together earlier, and we, we got into this a little bit. So I, you're going to hear some interesting things. Because you guys are taking issue with a lot of what we grew up with in the Bible as fact. And you're telling me that's not so. You got a picture. It is. That. I brought it right here. What is it? Before picture? I show you the picture you right. wanted to see. Right. This is Pope Pius XII right. in his private chapel praying to the black Madonna and child and right. all the popes of Rome in their that? private, just from the church. It's the Roman Catholic Church itself. 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 I just got rid of the copy of the history of the Black Madonna last night. I brought one copy. Uh, it's published by the Roman Catholic uh, order of nuns called the Daughters of St. Paul. And they said that the picture of the Black Madonna and child in Poland is reputed to have been painted by St. Luke. Now, St. Luke is said to have been one of Jesus' disciples. He ought to know what Jesus had looked like. So if he painted a black woman and child, who am I to say that he wasn't? Besides that, however, in Anacalypse... So, so now you guys one. are saying Jesus was black? We're, We're not, not saying, saying that. It's we, what it's, has it's, been written that's until history. The, up until the Nicene Conference of Bishops in 325, when Rome, under the order of Constantine the Roman Emperor, ordered the 219 bishop at Nicaea, and they took away Christianity from, 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 from the Africans. Just remember, that before they said Jesus was born in a manger in Bethlehem, they said he was born in a cave in Ethiopia. It was at the Nicene Conference that changed that. Let's go further. That Wait a minute, let me be sure I'm following you now. Uh -huh. You're saying that the birth of Christ as we know it mm -hmm. is not accurate. It's a farce. It was only you in... You realize what you're saying? A farce, a lie. You know what a lie is? A lie is a lie. <laughs> the person who wrote that at the Nicene Conference of Bishops in 325 AD, Constantine, the Roman Emperor, ordered a conference be held because Rome wanted to take over Christianity from the people who started it. Christianity was started with Pantheus and Boethius in a place called Alexandria in Egypt. And Egypt is in Africa. I saw it up to January the 9th, it was there. You talked about that a little bit last night in your lecture. There was a lecture last night, Dr. Simmons, here on campus. You talked about the separation of people don't want us to see Egypt as part of Africa. You talked about the historical thing about blacks being in Egypt as well. Can yes, uh, what, what I did last night... I don't want to get away from the other point. No, no, no I just, just, just said that what, what, what happened is that I dealt last night the fact that Herodotus, that the, the institutions of higher learning, white institutions, considered the father of history. He himself, when he visited Egypt around 450 BC, almost half a thousand years before Christ, said that the Ethiopians, the Egyptians, the people of cultures, which is uh, part of present day Turkey, were people of black skin and woolly hair. All right, and so I just want you to understand that the Egyptians we now see are conquerors, just like people who came here and took this land from the Indians. So that they are not indigenous to Africa, those who now rule Egypt, and Egypt, it's just as much a part of Africa as Birmingham or Alabama is part of the so-called United States. Let me, add Wait, this. Let, me, let me just be clear on this. So what you're saying to me now is that the people that we see, Sadat and all those guys, are not two Egyptians? But no. The, the fact that so then, so that mother was a Sudanese, Nasser's mother was a Sudanese, but their fathers were Arab conquerors. The one that was the African was Mohammed Naguib, the first president of Egypt, the one that overthrew Farouk. But one year after that, since he was looking for a hookup with the other Nile Valley countries as it used to be uh, in antiquity, he was removed by the Arab conquerors. The Arabs didn't come to Egypt until 640. The first non-African people 
came to Egypt, otherwise called the Hyksos, in 1675 BC. The Africans there were already in the 13th dynasty period. They had built every pyramid you saw there before. They had done the S-turn in the Nile. They built every one of the major temples that had already been built, including the Grand Lodge of Luxor. The first European to come there did not arrive until the Greeks arrived with um, uh, Alexander II, the son of Philip of Macedonia. Look, I'm a college graduate. I never heard all this stuff before. Because they didn't intend to teach you that. They can't tell you that you're inferior and teach you that you taught Egypt, um, um, Europe. The first Europeans to be civilized by the Africans were the Greeks. When you heard of Homer, the first European to have written anything, you couldn't miss that. They said that Homer wrote the Iliad and the Odyssey. And that was not until 833 BC. The Africans had already in 255,000 at the Tassili Mountain, they had the civilian period, first, second, and third, the pre-dynastic period, all the way up. The Africans had produced men like this, in Hotep, the multi-genius that designed the Step Pyramid of Saqqara, the first man to be a physician that even Hippocrates, the so-called father of medicine, is giving him credit and calling him the god of medicine. The Greeks changed his name from Inhotep to Escalapius. There he is. There he is. Wait a minute. This gets into what you're saying. So wait a minute. You guys are telling me now that black men taught Homer and as a matter of went fact, to Egypt to school. As a matter of fact, the Egyptians said Homer was Egyptian, not uh, Greek. That's right. It's only the, 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 the Europeans said that. The Westerners now said he was. But let, let us go back. Remember that Homer himself said in the Odyssey what? That the god Zeus and Apollo, Europe's first gods, came from Ethiopia. Go read it. In, and I didn't write it, it, it. He wrote it. Thales, from Thales down to Socrates. And Socrates down to Aristotle, which they call the pre-Socratian philosophers and the post-Socratian philosophers. Each and every one, including Plato, who spent 15 years in Egypt receiving their education. You're saying Plato was educated in Egypt? 15 years! See, what Before you all heard nothing right. of him, what every one of them. What you'd have me believe then also, it's for part of what you said last night, is that Pla Plato and these guys went back home and they were big guys. But they were taught in Egypt? Is that what you said? They came said? there for they their came for the education. And they said it. They didn't hide it. They it's the modern it. writers, the modern instructors and professors who uh, trying to deny it. Uh, the ancient ancient Egyptian you can't have in a racist school in Birmingham non-racist education. Let me get to something you said last night that's not going to make you very popular in this town and may not allow you to get safely out of town. You told an audience last night that you saw, I think, in a tomb in Egypt. Yeah. You saw it with your own two eyes, right? Yes. You told me that Moses, there were more than Ten Commandments, Moses just took 42. The great. negative confessions. Long, Moses isn't supposed to have been born until 1349 BC. The Africans were already in the 18th dynastic period. Akhenaten, who died before Moses was born, and uh, Enotep, who, who died more than 2,000 years before the birth of Moses, and others at the Grand Lodge of Mem had 42 laws called now the negative confession, one for each gnome. They go like this, I have not killed man nor woman. I have not spoken ill of the gods. Moses is supposed to be born in Egypt, they said, at a place called Succoth. Already, um, it says that Moses get the Ten Commandments of Mount Sinai. It, Mount Sinai is still in Africa, right? The Sinai Peninsula is a part of Egypt. More so. Is it possible for Moses to be born in Egypt, educated in Egypt? At age 85, he's still in Egypt, and he did not learn the negative confessions. Is it possible for you to go to school, born in the United States, go to kindergarten, uh, uh, elementary, junior high school, high school, and college, and never heard of the United States Constitution? Then it would have been possible, impossible for Moses when everybody had to read the negative confession five times a day for Moses not to have seen those 42 laws and extracted 10 of, the, 10 of them, leave 32 more. Now, if you could, get, you could go to the temple of Setaiwan at Abydos, to go to the, the, the tomb of Ramesses VI at the Valley of the Kings, go to the temple of Edfu, where you would, by the way, see the story of an immaculate conception and a virgin birth 4,100 years before the Mary and Jesus story. <laughs> As a matter of fact, wait. <laughs> No, no, let, me this, this wait, let, me, let me just put it in the form of a question then. I mean, I don't want to stop this, because we're here for information. But what you're trying to get me to believe is that 
Moses didn't get the Ten Commandments from Mount Sinai, but he got them from his fellow Africans. Moses was a high priest in Egypt, Egypt, a high priest of the Egyptians in Egypt. Then what was he teaching? He wasn't a high priest of the Jews. There were no Jews in those days. They called them. They were, remember now, there was no, no Israel yet. Israel is not until it, um, 1196. And when we to hear of Abraham, Avram as he was called, coming into Egypt, the, Egypt, the Africans already in Egypt, already in the 14th dynastic period when he shows up, all of the pyramids are built. That's another thing. Everyone, the 62 pyramids in Egypt were built before the first Jew was born. Why was he fleeing from the Pharaoh? Let me ask what you was the charge? I could write anything when I want to write, you know. Who can stop me from writing if I got the power? I was about to ask you, what kind of trouble do you get into for holding these kind of views? Oh, up some, the other day, I was, a black sister spat in my face and, because she couldn't take that. To, she couldn't take that Jesus was black. She said, no, no, no. I mean, he had no color. If he didn't have no color, how John the Baptist saw him to baptize him? Do you realize that you're getting at the foundation? That you, you, were, you were shooting and digging away at the foundation of what most of us grew up believing? Yeah, well, we believe a lot of things for a long time. One thing, they give us three pages in the Bible. Slave, obey your master. And that's what we believe for the longest time. They said that Jesus said, so how would Jesus, who fought the system, said to the slave, obey your master? It didn't sound rational, would it? So, look, most of the things, we're in, we're in a European system. You could come to this university and spend four years, go back and spend another two for your, for your masters, and another one or two for your doctorate, and never had any course at all about Africans. But every day you come here, you got courses about Europeans. This is an extension of European culture, European belief, European racism. And it, is, it has no intent of teaching about the Africans. The Africans built the Europeans' first university, the University of Salamanca in Spain. These are historical records. They just, it's just like... Okay, one, one of the things you said last night is that it's not just black people who are saying these things. No. <laughs> Most of this information are written by white. In white books. It's just that they don't emphasize it in the classroom. As a matter of fact, let me back you up when you open up the, the uh, discos. We were speaking about Columbus. None of them in here, none of the listening audience, even in the air, has the faintest idea that in the life of Columbus, when after his death, his family had to go to court because charges were raised, and this is in the record, in the Vatican, in the secret archives of the Vatican, that Columbus was shown a map of where the Queen of Sheba that Dr. Ben spoke about, this black woman who had made it with, uh, with Solomon and produced the son, Menelik I. And they lived more than 900 years before the birth of Jesus, had already sailed through what we now call the Strait of Gibraltar, came to lands to the west that was longer than Africa and Europe combined. And that brother is North, South, and Central America. May, may I add this? You, right here at this university, they teach, and I've just been here a few days, right? A day. They teach in this institution because it's the same as Cornell and where, that Hippocrates was the father of medicine. He's not until 333 B.C. Let me read this for you. Okay, you teach at Cornell, is that? I teach at Cornell also. They let you teach this kind of stuff at Cornell? They, they teach it now. I'm there. Okay. Uh, <laughs> 1700, in 1700 B.C., that's 1400 years before Hippocrates, you can find the, the, the Cahoon Medical Papyrus, Papyrus' paper. Okay. Uh, a compendium of information about women's diseases and pregnancies. In 1600 B.C., that's 1300 years before Hippocrates, the Edward C. Smith Papyrus, a comparative surgical text and anatomical inquiry. It especially deals with the spinal column. 1550, let me jump to one here. The, the, the um, Ebers Papyrus. A medical, there is the whole book on it. A medical paper by Queen Hatshepsut, the first known queen in history, an uh, Egyptian queen. A papyrus designed to show women how to develop a method to stop pregnancy, to insert into the vagina, made of the shrub of acacia and honey, which break down into lactic acid. Not only that, Monsanto, wait, 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 Dupin. So, so we're talking about birth control. Birth control in 1550 BC by the Africans. It's a long time before the pill. A few days before but, the pill. But keep in mind, keep in mind, keep in mind, however, all it, keep in mind that Europe is not yet in history. It, Europe is, European is, history is not yet. yet. Just, all I ask, one at a time. All right. Okay. okay. <laughs> Go ahead. The civilization began. Homer, I'm not written his Iliad analysis. And the hero, 
Okay, all the stuff that you're oh. saying, you're saying we can find this. Oh, I, no, I, nothing say if it's not here, it's either in Doc's library or mine at, back in New York. Nothing we take for granted. What the books we that we brought them? And you're saying they're not all written I, by black men? No, no, no. Anna Calypsus is written, okay. look now. Okay. Anna Calypsus is a two volume work by Sir Godfrey Higgins, written in 1838 in England and published by Watson Company. The Golden Bow is a 13 volume book by Sir James Frazier published simultaneously in the United States and England, and it was published in 1938. Bible myths and the parallels in other religions written by Thomas W. Jones and is published in 1887 by Watson Company, London, England. The um, Ruins of Empire by Kong C. F. Volney is published, there it is, it's published in 1792 by, by simultaneously in England and France, done by uh, a man who was Napoleon, with Napoleon de Bonaparte. Uh, um, let, me, let me just say this about that. If we just give you the benefit of doubt and consider what you're saying to be true, I mean, you are chipping away at everything we've ever been taught, most of the, we, what we believe. But you were taught it as slaves. Nobody. Slave in three pieces? Yes. We are no longer physical slaves, but we are mental slaves. And this is the worst form of slavery. Some of us believe that the Cadillac and the house on the beach makes us free. But it's the mind that makes us free. Well, I'm just glad I have to ask the questions and don't have to defend any of this stuff. <laughs> Go into something else for a minute. Tell us about some of those pictures, because I want to get uh, much into this hour. Well, again. this picture that you were looking at right here is the picture of, the, of Pope St. Peter. The first pope of Roman Catholicism, as the church admits. But this the man church has a black face. Black face, black everything. <laughs> if you strip him, he's black all the way down, except his fingernails and all those things. Like that. Well, how do I know you just didn't get a picture and paint a black face on it? No, that oh. is the statue in Rome. That that you're looking at. Now, right? now at the best take a jet. Can't afford take, it. Take the fastest means and go to Rome and, and come see back right and there. then tell us if it's not. That same picture. I used to teach at Roman you Catholic say, colleges. This is there now. Yes, now. And the every black pope, face every pope kisses has to his, kiss his feet. Every pope kisses his toe. They said his toes are worn by the towels and kisses placed there. If the book that I got it from was that that heavy, I'll bring it. That you see the pope kissing Pope John uh, the Twenty Third. And, and who, who is this black guy? Saint Peter. Peter. The man that they told you, every black minister, every white minister says, Jesus gave Peter the keys to heaven, which means that no white man, nobody else could enter into heaven unless he come by way of me, the black man. But I hold the keys to heaven. That's right. <laughs> and, and, I, and, and there's no reason why Peter should not open for me. He suffered too then. What else you got there? Well, what I have here is some black saints. St. Augustine, some of you say the St. Augustine, St. John Chrysostom, St. Athanasius, and St. Ambrose. Black saints of the church. You have to remember that Christianity is called in Europe and by Europeans as the new religion. Right. It was alien to Europe. Emperor Constantine is the one who decided to take it. He said, I need a religion to unify my empire. With this religion, I could then conquer the world. And he himself was never a Christian until on his dying bed in the year 337 when he became converted to Christianity. But, but, but he took it to unify his empire. But isn't it Augustine, in his unchristian doctrines, he wrote 48 different works. The last, the three most noted in the West is his confessions, which he specified who he, who he was, and then the holy city of God, and the last was on Christian doctrines, the fundamental principle for modern Christianity. Three black women, Felicita, Perpetua, and Nymphano, were the first to die for Jesus Christ. Next, and they were from what is today called... Uh, um, How do you know this? Anyway. It's in the documents of the church. And uh, it's in the writing of the church. And were, was, was it not uh, Pope uh, Melchizedek, the, the, the three African um, uh, popes of the Roman Catholic Church, Malchus, Victor III, and the other one. Galatius. Malicious. Oh, Galatius. Gal Galatius. We have them there. Now, these are church documents. But remember, when they, it, there came a time in 1506, 
after we lost power in Spain, the Africans ruled Spain from 711. We were calling ourselves Moors, M-A-U-E-R-S, then M-O-O-R-S. From 711 until 1485, 774 years, when we built and brought into Europe the university system, building the University of Salamanca, S-A-L-A-M-A-N-C-A, in Spain, a copy of the University of Genet from ancient Ghana, which was equally a copy of the University of Sankore in Tombuk, which the French later called Timbuktu. Now, these, 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 look, if you want to read it, read Stanley Lane Poole's The Moors in Spain, written in 1887, or Alejandro Macaziza. Read his book in Spanish, The Moors in Spain, and said that even the bath was introduced by those Africans. You said the bra was introduced by... <laughs> The bad was no, reintroduced because Rome had a bad the before, Brazil. Brazil. but they stopped because of not understanding the Christian doctrine that the, that the Europeans had embraced. They stopped for over a thousand years from taking baths. As a matter of fact, uh, I'd like to make mockery of the fact Queen that the Queen Victoria. Victoria of England boasting of herself being the cleanest woman in all of Europe, taking one bath per month. Uh, they, they, I have books show you where people were made saints for boasting and never even washed their hands. Yes, saints sir. of the church. Did, did you have a copy with dirt with you? Not, no, I didn't bring uh, too many. Okay, let me, let me, because you guys are bombarding us with so much. Just tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Dr. Well, my name is Yosef Ben Yekanen. I teach at Cornell University Af uh, History and Egyptology. Uh, I'm an author, former member of the United Nations. Uh, uh, graduate with a PhD from Cambridge University in England, a PhD from the University of, uh, of uh, Barcelona in Spain. Uh, that should help. I originally was a civil engineer who turned to anthropology and history with a law degree and practiced law. Now, uh, that, well, you know, black people had to do a little bit more to get a job. And um, <laughs> I, was, I was born in Ethiopia and came to the Caribbean as a young fellow at age six. My mother's a Puerto Rican and we lived and grew up in Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. My father was a barrister. And uh, I, I, as I said, worked with the United Nations and then finally started teaching at Columbia University and other places. Got fired a number of times, of course. I would imagine so. So yes, with this kind of thing, they don't want, um, with the documents in my hand. When I exposed that Planned Parenthood was nothing new, okay. that it was done in Africa in, 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 in 50, as early as 1550, I was fired on the spot by Professor Ralph Linton. But about well, 10 years later, the, the American Medical Association published the Ebers Papyrus, the same thing I got fired for. Okay, I want to get back to something in one of your books in a minute, but just tell us, our audience at home and studio audience, a little bit about yourself, Dr. Smith. Oh, I'm not as fortunate as Dr. Ben. Dr. Ben is the intellectual, <laughs> so I like to be the other extreme. <laughs> I like to say that my college is that of hard knocks. And I use myself as the example of, as to how high a black man could come from mother wit. Uh, mother wit in the sense that it is said that blacks are not intelligent. And so that what we do is complement each other. He being the extreme with all the degrees and I will remain the little fellow in the street. However, the little fellow in the street have taught at some of your best colleges and taught the professors so that they could teach you. Uh, I've taught at Marist College, I've lectured for Yale, I have lectured in most of your best institutions. Uh, I just went to do a week seminar out in the state of Washington to educate some professors how to teach in teaching and teaching logic. Uh, I, I think what happened, like some people say, well Simmons, why don't you go and, and get the thing? I said, no, at my age, I, I'm, I don't, I'm not looking for prestige, but my children will. And, I, and since there's a thing that black people are dumb, I like to sit back being dumb and just waste the intellectual other folks away. <laughs> well, he's being very modest. I'm looking for that. He's quote. my associate in my office. That's all right. And yes, and at Malcolm King College and was the chairman of the Department of History in many schools, so he's being modest. I am. Let, let's get back to some of this. Let me see that for a minute. Let's get back to some of this stuff you we were talking about last night, you were talking about at dinner. You guys just took on the Bible. And Which one? Said, 
There are many Bibles. You got about uh, three thousand versions, and uh, the the most the one that most people here believe in is the King James version. And when you, a version is not a fact, a version is something like the original. And James commissioned forty-seven men under Sir Francis Bacon. They he pulled them from Cambridge University, Oxford University. University of Eton and University of Scotland at Glasgow. Those 47 men wrote God's words. You're not going to be very popular in this area. I didn't plan to be. Okay. <laughs> this quote from one of your books, and this will be available to our studio audience, and we'll talk about this a little bit after we get off the air. And I'm not even sure I should read this. This is from a Bible. It, that's the Bible in this. Uh, you should read it. Read what was in Genesis up until the 6th century. It is still in the Book of Mormons. That's the people in Salt Lake City, which many blacks have joined because they'll join the Ku Klux Klan as the open membership. <laughs> uh, it is still in the Calvinist teaching in South Africa. And read what was in the Bible okay. up until the 6th century. So you're saying that this is still in the Mormon Bible? It's still in the Mormon Bible. It is still in the Calvinist Bible. And... Uh, they look at the bottom where the, the Roman Catholic Church had it and they now make an excuse that they were sorry that it was ever in there, but nevertheless it was. All right, let me just share this with our audience here and our audience at home. And this is from one of Dr. Ben's books. And from all the books, that it's on page 120 that, and 21 all right. in that book. Let me just share a little bit of it here because I want to get some reaction from you and it's something for folks to think about. And you say this is from a Bible. Therefore, it must be Canaan, your firstborn, whom they enslave. And I'm just starting in the kind of the middle because there's a lot of it here. And since you have disabled me, doing ugly things in blackness of night, Canaan's children shall be born ugly and black. Moreover, because you twisted your head around to see my nakedness, your grandchildren's hair shall be twisted into kinks and their eyes red Again, because your lips jested at my misfortune, theirs shall swell. And because you neglected my nakedness, they shall go naked. And the rest of this stuff is underlined. And this is a quote from the book. Bible, you say. <coughs> and their male members shall be shamefully elongated. Men of this race are called Negroes. Their forefather Canaan commanded them to love theft and fornication, to be banded together in hatred of their masters, and never to tell the truth. That's right. It was in the Judeo-Christian Bible until the 6th century of the Christian era, also called A.D., Anto Domino. And some black ministers refer to it. Just a few weeks ago in New York, I was listening to my radio on one of these religious programs sponsored by a liquor store. And it, it says, the minister says that bl these young blacks are acting up. We shouldn't act up anyhow because when, all of us, when we die and we go to heaven, we're going to be white anyhow. So we say anything. Rem remember that we did not know that Christianity came from, e from it, um, um, Egypt and that the first monastery was on the island of Phila, which is still there now and that it, it, the Christianity went into Ethiopia and all of North Africa where they had seven patriarchs and 27 bishops before the first one in Greece or Rome. We knew nothing about that. We didn't know. Up to now you got black people sending missionaries to Africa not knowing that the Coptic church is older than the Roman church. We still send missionaries. We still tell lies about Africans eating the missionaries. I wish we did eat the missionaries, then we would have had no problem. But <laughs> then we still got that. We still got roots, people thinking that roots has had something to do with history when the man says a novel. People naming their children Kente Conte and Conte Kente and all kind of thing now. With these people, you, you take issue with that? You find something yeah, wrong with it, that? Yeah, it's, it's garbage. It has nothing to do with history. Are you calling it's roots, a novel. roots the most popular television it, show in the history Amos of Amos and Andy was the most popular radio show. And it had nothing to do with black people, it were two white Jews. <laughs> You know, the, 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 such, the, 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 as I told you, the worst part of our, our enslavement is not the shackle on the hand, it's the shackle on the mind. What we have been conditioned, 
Look, remember this, that the master, the slave master doesn't train his slave to be free. We once used to train ourselves when we had such things as the African Methodist Episcopal Church, the African Baptist Church, the African newspaper, Frederick Douglass, Nat Turner, Denmark Vesey, and all these different people had churches where they taught the people their own history. Look, go into our churches and find out, do they sing the spirituals anymore? No, they got anthems from Scotland, from um, Germany. They don't sing the songs of the African people anymore in the churches. Say, what's wrong with that? What, what's wrong? With, how does, how does a, a song from, Europe, from Scotland relate to you? You're Scottish? <laughs> don't, you could have fooled me. <laughs> but you see, this is the whole suppose, thing. Suppose that we just, not all of it, just suppose we believe half of what you said here tonight. What difference is it going to make? A quite a lot of difference. The, your behavior. What difference? What difference? The behavior of the child. If you tell a child that all he, his ancestors and all his people before him ever was, and you prove it to him by not showing him anything that his people did, why would he feel good? When you got busing now, everybody's been fighting for busing. So the bus goes, you, show me one bus bringing one white kid from a white neighborhood into a black neighborhood to study. All the buses go from the black neighborhood to the white neighborhood. Show me a class in music appreciation where they're showing you African music. It is European music alone. Now it has an impact on the child. The problem that we are facing is that, it, I, I see you, you ask what's different, okay in the church tomorrow. They're gonna to be a church and every one of the black churches got a white Jesus. Go into a Chinese church and see if you don't see Jesus got slit eye like a Chinese. Go, you know what I mean? Go you to everybody but us. Religion is the deification of a culture. And the gods look like the people talking about it. And the angels, here you got Jesus. Now give me, how, if you talk about image. December the 25th, coming. You're gonna see this and before. Jesus wrapped with swaddling bands. It says it. Wool. We're in the desert now. It's 110 degrees minimum Fahrenheit. We're in the desert and the child is wrapped in swaddling band, the wool. What mother's gonna wrap her child in a wool blanket in the desert? Go, let's go further. And on the roof of the manger, there is snow. If you, you give your daughter an icicle and then tell her, take it back and put it in the oven with 110 degree Fahrenheit and go back to expect to find an icicle. You're gonna find running hot water. <laughs> but that image is in our head. This is a European version that was painted by Michelangelo for Pope Julius II in 1509 in the Sistine Chapel. He finished in 1511. An image, one picture that says what a thousand word. Now you have three disciples, three, three wise men in the middle of the desert one is from Africa. One is black, they said. I mean, how does this be? How does this possible? Moses born in Egypt, and they show him in the book. He said, you born in Africa. Another one. Okay, the okay, angel okay. of the Lord, wait now. Okay. The angel of the Lord come to Mary, and said to Mary, carry the little boy and hide him among his cousin in Egypt, because Herod wants to kill him, right? He comes and, she comes and take this child to Africa. Egypt is in Africa. Hid him among his cousin. He's blonde, he's blue eyed, and he's and, and he got golden hair. And he's hidden among a bunch of black kids. The army came, the navy came, everybody searched every house and came find that boy. God. Time's moving on and there's there's so much here. Okay, let me just throw this at you. I'm sure you've offended a lot of people's religion. There are those who say that, would say, or sure I'm thinking, or sure I'm sure they're thinking, that what you're saying is just a lot of racist garbage. Well, they, no, they will say, I'm reverse racist. They don't allow us to be plain racist. <laughs> we have to be different. We're the reverse kind. Now, people will say anything, and even black people will say we will control our mind are thinking the point is this that the person said have never read anything hardly let us go into the theologian's library and see the amount of books they have how many of these people have gone and traveled you see what i'm saying there, there is no major university um no li major library in in europe i have never been to 
There's no major library in Asia or Africa I have never been to. There is, there, I have been to every one of the major tombs and temples of Egypt and got the pictures and read the hieroglyphs and everything like that. You even said you discovered England. Tell people I about discovered it. England when I was, uh, the first time I went to England, I discovered it. I was in the middle of London walking around, doing like this, looking around and the Bobby, that's the policeman, he came and he says, what, what, what you doing? I said, I'm discovering England. He says, you must be deaf. You know, that means crazy in English. And how, England have always been here. I says, well, I'm doing a Columbus. I just came here. I'm the first. I'm the first of my people to come, so I got to discover it. <laughs> they discover everything that they came to, isn't it? They discover the source of the Nile, where the African brought them from the source of the Nile. Africans there having a nice bath, naked. Naked, we were bathing very naked because wh what we got to hide? We were naked. But you claim that Africans invented the Brazier. Yeah, <laughs> but the, the fact that they invented the brise as a string for the purpose of keeping the breast from, from jumping up and down. I mean, you know, kids, it causes young men to burn when they see that. <laughs> but the, the thing is, uh, as I was listening to Dr. Ben speaking about the European discovery, I thought about going to the moon, that the Europeans have not changed. Up to today, he still operates that way. Wherever he goes, the first <laughs> thing he does is plant a flag. When the United States sent men to the moon, they didn't care if there were moon people up there. The first thing they did is put, put that flag. flag. This belonged to us and the Bible. And ready to kill for it. Okay, putting aside charges of reversed racism, you guys are jumping at the beliefs of a lot of black folk. I mean, at dinner, you shook up some people when you said that... Uh, talk about black preachers. Yeah, but let me just ask you this. I mean, let's just say this. All right. People believe, unfortunately, most black people here believe that the only religion black people have had was Christianity or Judaism or Islam. They forget that the first known religion was the worship of Ptah, P-T-A-H, along the Nile. There was no Adam and Eve mentioned any place yet because there was no Judaism. And if there's no Judaism, there's no book of Genesis. But you went so far as to say that the uh, virgin birth, Adam and Eve, Noah, were all repetition and they could read w the works of... And you said they're myths. They're myths. All Story. religion is myths. Religion is based upon belief. There are people who would bet their lives that I mean, Jesus was born There are people who are dying to go into cemeteries. <laughs> But th that doesn't make things stop. The way we were taught as if there was no other religion but Judaism, Christianity, or Islam. They are there were religions and our religion way older than Judaism and Christianity and okay, Islam. Let me, let me jump that to this the case. Africans okay. did. The religion of uh, the worship of Ulidamari, for example, among the Yoruba, is more than 2,000 years older than Christianity. All right, let me get to this because time, I see time is creeping up on us. Uh, we were sitting around the dinner table some students and people and question came to you both the way you sound you guys may not believe in God or something I am married to an ex-nun uh, ro an ex-Roman Catholic nun I drive her to church 25 years we've been married a few days ago and I drive her to church on occasion I'll go in and listen I'll go to the mosque I'll go to the Buddhist temple I go to anybody's religion because religion is a belief Nobody has it. Now, you ask if I am believe in God, you must first explain because I met the guy that robbed my house, believe in God, he had a big cross on his chest when they caught him in down at the precinct. He believed that didn't stop him from robbing my house. Believing in God don't make you good or bad. The Ku Klux Klan believe in God. The one thing that they said that they have established a religion to protect the name of Jesus. And so read the whole philosophy. The, most of the people here in the Bible Belt will cut your throat for being black. Uh, did the Bible stop them from being racist? No. That don't mean a thing because you believe. You believe and your behavior are two different things. And uh, uh, people ask, you believe in God, you don't believe in God. So what that means? It doesn't mean I won't cut your throat. Okay, but you said earlier that if uh, we start playing, paying black preachers tomorrow morning, the church will close. <laughs> How many of them come in to do volunteer work? It's a business. There's a salary people get out of it, whether it's Christianity, Judaism, Islam, Buddhism, or what? Christianity Stop. and religion as we know it is a business? Big business. 
biggest business is bigger than IT and T. You get all kinds of break, tax breaks, and all kinds of privileges when you're the minister. His salary is paid. You think the Pope would be there if he didn't get a big salary? He'd get the biggest salary of all. Do you think, no, let's face it. How many ministers you know doing it for free? <laughs> just tell me. Okay, let's just, this is black. If you don't pay your 10% tithing and see how, if you're going to get buried. <laughs> they leave your corpse right, and may come to the undertaker parlor and say a few words, but you're not coming to the cemetery. You, you, you sing in the choir all you want and go and get married and see if you have to pay. What, what are we to learn from all this? What, what, how are we to change our lives or how will it change our lives in a better can it? No, you, I, I am not against anyone believing in a God system. To the contrary, I do believe a in a God system. system. A system. But what I'm against is that for African people, and by the way, you're Africans, you know, I, you may not know that, but just remember if you get a rabbit and put it in an oven, and the next day you go in and it has little uh, little ones, you don't call them biscuits. <laughs> and if Africans come to America and got little babies, they're Africans. Okay, I know you don't like that when you look in the mirror because you can't think you're an African. But any, anyhow, I have no objection at all. My children, I have a daughter who's a Jehovah Witness. I have... Uh, Does that bother you? No, it don't bother me because I train my children. And I know what they believe and don't believe. And in fact, of her being a Jehovah Witness, when when, when problems strike, it's Big Daddy they come into. I know that. And my daughter was trained to be intelligent that you don't pray to stop getting pregnant. You have to do something about that. You gotta go, you gotta go either to the drugstore or a gynecologist. You pray all you want. If you have having a man, the praying will stop the pregnancy. You understand? But birth control will. Okay, the pill will help. Now, though, that's reality. I'm not gonna tell my daughter no, you believe in God if you've got a man pray and, and the boy will make you pray. Okay, but I can think of a specific example. People who may be physically ill would not go to the doctor. I'm thinking of one particular instance that I know about. Right. Lady would not go to the doctor because she said she'd rather be in church. She's going to die soon. <laughs> I do not want a minister when I get hit by a car. I want a specialist in bones. <laughs> Well, let, let, let me take you for a moment. Let me take, uh, use, use myself for an example. I was bleeding to death. I was going to die. I was losing blood faster than the doctors could give me. And they said, we must operate. And there comes a priest to say something over me, whatever it is. I tell him, I don't need him. I don't need him. I want a doctor. That's right. That's intelligence. He's, he's standing in the way of the doctors. They need to work in me. It doesn't mean that he doesn't believe in God. It means that he's intelligent. And this is because 1963. The, because the priests want the same doctor. If the priest had an accident and the doctor comes up and another priest come up and when he look and, and he has a, a, a ruptured um, aorta or something like that, you think he's going to tell the guy, pray man, I need that, and tell the doctor, go and tell the doctor, get me to the hospital. How, when you go to the hospital, how many, how many priests, ministers you will see lying up there getting treated? Because they, were, they got sense. <laughs> You know what I mean? You know, you it isn't ir irreligious or godly for me to say, I got a broken, I fell down and broke my leg. But and then say, Father, straighten it out. <laughs> you know what the Bible said? I will help those who help themselves. What the, the Bible could be used for negative and positive. It got all kind of negative and positive. And the whole thing is your interpretation of it. You go to 15 Baptist church and you get 15 back. Why tell me now, if it's religion, that you got one block 200 feet long and got six Baptist church in there? <laughs> the same Baptist uh, denomination. Tell me, why? tell me you why, tell me if why. you're a Christian, why you need a Methodist, a Baptist, uh, a, a Presbyterian, a Catholic, and it's the same Jesus. Why? Money. <laughs> Big business. Everybody want to run their thing. If I get 10% from you, 10% for the next guy, 10% of $70,000, yeah, it's good, good loot. I mean, I could get a few Cadillacs behind that, and a nice home, and a nice wife with a mink coat, and you see some people taking the last dollar and giving to the church, and yeah. then come and ask me for my dollar. Let me, let me just, because I've been informed that we have about, I guess, less than five minutes, maybe three minutes. We've covered a lot of subjects. We've had a lot of questions. And I guess in just maybe a minute summary, each of you, I mean, we hear about this stuff maybe once a month, Black History Month, 
-hmm. And we go back for the other 11, living our lives, being bombarded with other kinds of information. What can we take from here and what can we do with it and how can it help us? I mean, that's a multifaceted question, but if you can, let me start with you, Doc. Well, what I would say is that I would advise anyone to start reading and researching on their own because I don't know of any school that educates. I've been trying to find a school that does. And all of them, as far as I find out, all they do is train people to be a bunch of regurgitators. So I say to my students that you have to go out and take that training that you receive and then make it work for the benefit of yourself and your people. And then you show me that you are one who are now happen to be an educated individual. So you have to keep reading and it will benefit you in the long run. Well, is there any value to what we've been doing here for the last hour? Yes, because now we have brought a tremendous amount of new information hopefully to light and other people will start trying to check us out and then they too will become enlightened. We hope that they do try to prove us wrong. But you probably also offended a lot of folks. Well, look, new knowledge does. If someone tells you that your girlfriend that you love so well is a prostitute and you've never seen her prostituting, it's shocking. And if you catch her, you really can't believe it. You might even kill the guy for telling you. So I'm not surprised if it hurt. Because when you start to change or, or deal with people's belief pattern that they have held on so daily to, and many have even offered to fight, give up their lives for their belief, only to find that their belief is a, untrue. Okay, we just have a minute left, and I know that's not a lot of time, but final statement on your part, Dr. Ben. God is truth, they said, and truth is a constant effort of research. There is no limit to truth, and one must look constantly to find truth. I've traveled this entire world. I didn't sit one spot and read one book. I went to thousands of libraries over the age. I'm 64, and I've been, from 1938, I have been doing research in the area of African people. Do you think you've been making any progress, making any difference in people's lives? Uh, progress is a, is a relative thing. It all depends on what you're equating from what point to where. Okay, we only got 30 seconds left, so. Yes, you... uh, No, we haven't made any progress if you look at, at percentage-wise. We, and the college campus we are now, professors, let's say, okay. where we got five professors and a thousand students, one time we had no professor in a hundred students. Uh, it doesn't make any difference. The percentage is worse now. Okay, we're out of time, and we want to thank uh, those of you at home and those of here in the studio. If you'll stick around, we'll talk a little bit more. But uh, we hope you found something very interesting and stimulating, and I know you've got...